Hey, welcome back ghouls and goblins. I hope you're having an absolute magical day and thank you so much for taking the time to support the channel. Holy Toledo's mythic rank number one. Oh, we've done it. We're going to break down the deck list that we used, the strategies, the synergies, the sideboard guide, demonstrating all of this within our gameplay footage. And then we'll wrap up with our final thoughts deck review and of course our daily pack opening. So make sure to like comment and subscribe it really does help support the channel with that out of the way let's take a look at the deck wolf so you know we need this deck nerfed obviously it's not going to be banned as it is an alchemy deck we're playing traditional or best of three today uh and again reaching mythic rank number one. Oh my gosh can you believe it i certainly can't and thanks to all of the support from the community because this wouldn't have been possible without you so this is the build that we had. It is a Naya, white, green, and red life gain combo focused around Cabaretti Rebels. Like I said, we're in traditional alchemy or best of three. We have 32 creatures to our four non-creatures and an average mana value of 2.4. 24 lands in the build here for us to keep things nice and consistent, or at least hopefully. Our cornerstone card is Cabaretti Rebels for three and enchantment. Whenever you cast a creature spell, seek a creature card with lesser mana value, then put it into the battlefield. Holy Toledo's, we're going to talk about this in the wrap up as to how it should be adjusted to make the deck a little bit more fair. And of course, we will be uh, comboing on top of this to flood our entire deck into play in a single turn, which is ridiculous, um, and hopefully kill our opponent at the same time simultaneously. So how will we accomplish this? Well, first and foremost, it's going to be the Grinning Ingus for three, a 2-2 two -two in which we can pay one red source to return it to our hand, then adding two generic and an additional red uh, at sorcery speed in which we can use to recast Grinning Ingus. The entering of Grinning Ingus to the battlefield will trigger the Revels, right? So how do we stay net positive on our mana? Well, it's things like Birgi, God of the Storytelling. Whenever you cast a spell, add one red. Uh, until your next turn you don't lose it so this will allow us to play, play grinning ingus grab the red source from beer use that red source to bounce it to our hand boom 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 tap right and then cabaretti rebels just floods the field with literally all of our two and one drops which is oh my gosh uh we also have racketeers boss for two to get the job done it's a three two nice body a lot of meat in the seat when it enters the battlefield choose up to two creatures and or planeswalker cards in your hand they perpetually gain when you cast the spell create a treasure token so We'll name Ingus. When Ingus enters, it creates a treasure token, and then you can spend that treasure as the red source to bounce it. Boom, it enters. It's a, a perpetual effect, so it stays on Ingus. Every time it enters, it'll make the treasure. You can go and go and go and go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So that will be the uh, core concept of the deck. Those are our most important four cards. And then everything outside of that is, you know, just sauce. We're gaining life uh, primarily as well. This is really good to mitigate any damage that aggro decks are doing to you and uh, really give you the wiggle room that you'll need um, to go another turn in case you can't finish the game on that individual turn because sometimes uh, things happen, right? Um, so, you know, if you pad your life total up to 100, there's very little chance that your opponent's gonna kill you in their next turn unless they're also using this deck. And that's where we get into some really, really uh, weird scenarios where uh, you're gaining so much life in a mirror match and then they're draining so much life because we have Dina. We'll talk about this in a second, but you're, you'll use your entire turn timer and it goes back and forth and it now becomes a timer war, which is super, super exciting. Um, and then so the life gain to help us accomplish this, the Lunark Veteran, you know, this is going to come into play by default whenever you cast a true drop with the Revel. So we don't really need to worry uh, about it so much. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Uh, fantastic. We also have the Innkeeper. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, gain one life. And when the Innkeeper enters the battlefield, create a treasure. Now, I'm sure you're all aware of this. Uh, the treasure is nice for mana consistency. It'll also allow you potentially to play the Dina Soul Steeper. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life, right? So uh, we're flooding the field with four veterans, with four Innkeepers. So whenever we play a creature, the Ingus, which we can do infinite times, we're going to gain eight life. Go and we're going to deal a damage to our opponent, and that is just the most ridiculous thing, right? Uh, not only that, but with that life gain triggers, 
We'll also push up the Moon Dancer, plus one, plus one. It's a two, two for two. And whenever we gain life, scry one. Fantastic. That really helps us find the combo pieces that we're looking for. Voice of the Blessed, also for two, is a two, two. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on the voice. If it has four counters, it gets Flying and Vigilance. If it has six counters, no, 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 no. Sorry, if it has 10 counters, uh, it's going to grab Indestructible as well. So, you know, getting this up in the air to attack, to defend, uh, it's going to get a, a large amount of damage through to our opponent, which is quite nice. Much like the Moon Dancer, um, you know, just also big blockers is pretty cool as well. The Inquisitor Captain has a four drops to three, three with Vigilance when it enters the battlefield if you cast it. And there are 20 or more creature cards with mana value three or less among your graveyard hand and library seek two creature cards with mana value three or less put them into the battlefield and shuffle this is fantastic uh you know the captain is a card it gets another card and then the rebels will get a card so that's a triple uh creature to the battlefield situation <laughs> absolutely crazy however because we are flooding the field with so many creatures so quickly the captain many times will not be worth the value so we want to play this as quickly as possible right because if we're playing at late game all it really is doing is triggering the rebels because we'll have put so many creatures from the, our deck our hands our they won't be in the graveyard hopefully <laughs> in the battlefield and then uh you know this won't be able to get that job done but it's still very very good for uh the matches and you know it is fairly frequent where you are dropping it early game uh to flood the field with some of the goodies that you like, you know, like free Birgi, free Ingus, sign me up, right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Birgi can also be used as the Harnfell Horn of Bounty for five mana, fairly expensive, but we have lots of the times, not only infinite mana um, uh, to stabilize that we're always spending, you know, to one to zero to one to zero, but we can potentially go net positive, and I'll explain this in a second. This will allow us to cast more expensive cards like the Horn and, you know, really help us with that late game. To discard a card, exile the top two cards of your library, and you may play those cards. This is fantastic. You know, late game, you draw a land. Oh, great. Well, it is great because now we can discard it with the horn, get the two cards underneath of it, and keep going, right? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, uh, you know, more sauce, more sauce, more sauce. We've talked about the entirety of the deck. The Phantom comes in through the Disturb. Uh, this triggers when Birgi leaves the battlefield. Veteran triggers when it enters. Phantom will trigger when it leaves, which is really quite interesting, right? So nice uh, synergy here as well. The land base, we have the gardens, we have the farmland, the pathways, you know, the pass. We've got the rock fell veil. Uh, putting in a few multi-black sources here within the ridge and the glade or Dina. Typically, we are casting this with treasures or free casting it through the captain, through the rebels, right? That's our primary goal, right? Um, now, the infinite mana. Instead of just, you know, one to zero, what we can do is, well, double Racketeer's boss. Obviously, if you're making more than one mana each turn when it enters, that's net positive. Or, you know, the combination of the boss and a Birgi, right? So, you know, if you can combine these two together, now you're gaining mana every time it enters, which is really cool. And then you can dump that mana into a captain. Uh, you can dump that mana into a horn uh, and whatever you feel fit to do so uh you know potentially even scries as well okay so that's the main board easy peasy lemon squeezy let's talk about the sideboard baby well we have thalia guardian of thabran here a two one for two with first strike non-creature spells cost one more to cast this is pretty straightforward any deck that's playing non-creature spells um mono black the uh the asper builds any any deck that's using meat hook <laughs> all of them i guess um but you know just rule of thumb did you lose to non-creature spells if yes cyborg thalia perfect the elite spellbinder you know similar situation here uh could not only be um non-creatures but maybe big bad creatures as well that, that kind of get a hold of you as we don't have much removal in the deck the elite spellbinder can you know take care of anything and so any annoyances the binder's going to get the job done here as a 3-1 with flying when it enters the battlefield look at opponent's hand Exile a non-land card from it. For as long as it remains exiled, its owner may play it, but as an additional cost uh, for two to get it done. So, you know, just a, an additional tax is nice. And, you know, working in uh, conjunction with Thalia quite nicely here. Curse of Silence. Enchant player. Uh, as Curse of Silence enters the battlefield, choose a card name, and then the spells with the chosen name uh, from the enchanted player can be cast still with an additional two uh, tax. 
whenever enchanted player casts a spell with a chosen name, you may sacrifice the silence if you do draw a card, right? So this is for the mirror matches. They're naming Grinning Ingus. So the Grinning Ingus costs two more, right? So they can't loop it back and forth. And you do not sacrifice it. Keep it in play, right? Uh, keep it in play. Keep it in play. Uh, da, 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 Skyclave Apparition. This is also for the mirror matches, um, taking Cabaretti Revels out of play, right? You could take the Ingus too, potentially, but most likely you're going to snag the Revels with this. When it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent, uh, non-token permanent that you don't control with mana value four or less. And then when it leaves the battlefield, they'll get the uh, blue illusion where its power and toughness are equal to that card's mana value, uh, which is quite nice. So, you know, just taking care of that. Curse of Silence, uh, the Skyclave Apparition for the mirror match. Of course, Skyclave Apparition taking care of other things. So is Curse of Silence. But uh, within the current meta, you're not going to see other things, <laughs> which is pretty ridiculous. But, uh, you know, keep it in mind that if there's, you know, something that's a permanent that's annoying you, that you can take care of it here. Uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker uh, is maybe a good example here for the Skyclave to take. All uh, right, cause just get that out of there. We don't want them copying anything or any of their targets that they would be copying as well. You can uh, deal with them this way. So, you know, that's the deck. That's the sideboard. Those are our sideboard plays, basically. You know, if it's a control deck, get in the Thalia, get in the Binder. Um, if it's a mirror match, get in Curse of Silence, get in the Skyclave Apparition. Uh, we do the sideboarding today for you a little bit, so you can kind of see how we do that. But those are my basic um, rules, if you will, for the deck as to how I've been able to successfully sideboard. Oof. All right, so a reminder, we got the pack to open after today's gameplay footage. We're killing it within Mythic. Um, a little bit odd today, and I may even go above and beyond and incorporate some of the matches because we had great matches while we were doing the live event on Twitch, which many of you um, attended, which was fantastic. Massive support, really cool. Uh, I might put a couple of those matches in as well. They're going to have like a song request and stuff going on from the live stream, just so you're aware of that. But uh, the first few matches recorded specifically for YouTube today, which is really cool. So again, I hope you all enjoy. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we want these Mythic videos to do very well so we can continue to do them in the future, right? Cheers. Enjoy. Playing first, as always. We get incredibly lucky. We have a gold-ranked opponent, but I've lost to gold players before, and I'll lose to gold players again, so let's not, uh, you know, just be super happy about that because it could definitely turn against us, and we don't want to be overconfident, right? Rakdos deck, maybe. A uh, white source. Here's a voice. We have the ridge out next. Or the Cabaretti Revels, which is the big part of this deck, as long as it's left alone. Body dropper is good, but it's not uh, anything we're too worried about. You know, attacks. We like the voice. It's going to stay. Whenever you sacrifice another creature, put a plus one plus one counter on Body Dropper. You can pay two to sacrifice another creature. It's also going to gain Menace until the end of turn. They sack the Twitch with Fatal Grudge. We have to sacrifice a permanent of the same type. In this case, a creature, as Twitch was a creature. The Twitch also dies when it uh, learns when it dies. They're going to grab a Necrotic Fumes. That is hard exile on Creature or Planeswalker if they sacrifice. Let's just be greedy. We have uh, enough life to say we can take another turn. We have two whites. This is going to be a second red source. The red source is nice for Grinning Ingus. And then next turn is Captain into Double Revels. And the Predator. Now, this is a fantastic card, something we don't want to see. It for 3 to 14. Predator may tap itself on our end step just to grow. So greedy. This is a white source, so we would be boxed out from voice. Let's just captain. Captain my captain. This should uh, help us accumulate enough life gain to offset any damage that we've taken. There we go. Racketeer's boss is exactly what we want to see. Name our innkeeper, name the other boss. 
gain life from the innkeeper. Oh, Lord. It's the Ingus. I, and we have the treasure. Not too bad. auto pay here just for one more go at it veteran out grab a little laugh skis and adina out beautiful now that's exactly what we want because there's so much life gain that now we are converting uh, a good portion of that to damage however it is a little bit unfortunate that they have exiled in their hand right so they're gonna go ahead and probably take care of her but at the end of the day, it's a pretty good field state anyways. The voice that can, you know, grow, 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 grow. And we're quite wide. With that being said, Grinning Angus is also a fantastic um, target for that exile. And maybe actually one you should take. They're going wide, however, with Loaf making the spiders. We get hit for four with the predator in the air down to 18 question mark woof okay so they're going to take that voice of the blessed with the predator whenever it taps it gets to exile a card from a graveyard and uh simultaneously put that plus one plus one counter on it All right, so we go Innkeeper, makes the treasure, times two. It's also gonna seek an additional two Lunark Veterans, so that's the only one drop, um, which is very, very, very good. With Dina out. All right, and then when we play our next creature, the Innkeeper is also there. So it's four, five sources, as we already have an Innkeeper of life. So whenever we play a card, Dina's dealing five damage to our opponent, right? And we can replay Ingus multiple times. So what we do here is we bounce Ingus to our hand, we play the Racketeer's boss, we name Ingus as the card, and then we're going infinite at that point, right? So we would bounce Ingus, play the Racketeer's boss, that would perpetually give Ingus the treasure when it enters, and then, you know, we just go, go, go. Z, T, Z, Lemon, Squeezy. Um, Rakdos annoy me. I mean, this would take the Predator, the Skyclave could take the Predator. That's all I'm really worried about. I'll drop a single dancer and a single captain. Ah. Uh, mm. Yeah. So the captain's great early game. Very, very good early game. However, later on, it's not as good. Um... Like, if we already have a full field, Captain's not actually going to tutor anything out from our deck because our whole deck is already in the field. Um, so that part of it's not great. I do not mind this. I mean, that's infinite life gain in our hand already as far as synergy goes. It's, yeah, infinite, quote-unquote, but it's not going to get the job done because life gain doesn't win the match by itself. It just will run your timer out. Uh, picking up that Revels, though, that actually completes the combo. Now we're going infinite, um, playing the entire deck, right? And that includes Dina, that includes all those life gain components, and, uh, most likely include a win. So. Let's get after it. Hopefully... We play Rebels, uh, and then we play our Birgi. Birgi, ideally, is going to, with the Rebels, tutor out the Racketeer boss. Fingers crossed. And then we can name Grinning Ingus, and that's that. Otherwise, um, you know, Birgi's still going to get the job done. Because whenever we play Ingus on top of Birgi... Woof! Alright, so, I mean, Voldaren up here is beautiful. Body Dropper 2, and now Removal 3... Um, with the gas, like they're really curving out on us here. This is as good as it gets for them. Like so, down to ten minimum, right? Minimum. 
All right, we see that here for four. Ooh. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, not good. What are we doing here? Street like coin or carnage. Tribute his own. I'm gonna toss our rebels too. We don't need two of them. Sure, it's nice, but defy me, and you'll lose everything. Or do we toss the land? Three, four, we're not playing five anyways. I don't know about this. Little concern. Oh, we pulled the land anyways. All right, Birgi. Give us that Racketeers boss. Big money, big money, big money, big money, big money. Oh, that's uh, not huge money. Medium money. <laughs> A little money. I mean, it could be worse. Can okay, they make the devil? Oh, the predator's good. We just need unlimited life. They remove Birgi. We're so screwed. That last card. They don't have any mana, though. One mana. Could be a Voltaic Surge. They sacrifice the blood token. Ooh, but do they take the voice? The voice is the only thing that can block the predator. Our decisions. We'll see what's going on here. It isn't eaten alive. They take Birgi. We are not in good condition. They hit us for five to four. Hmm, this is very, very bad. <laughs> Your punishment is my entertainment. Good. Blocks. It's a wrong land, too. We have uh, two more plays of this. A, not the worst, but we need uh, some life gain. We need some life gain, brah. Lightning is again, and we can do this one more time. It's not life gain, yo. Nor does it have flying. So I think that we might just die here. We don't have anything to discard either, so Nob Nixilis kills us also. Okay. Nope, no life gain. We lose here. Okay. I'm gonna take more Skyclaves. That was fairly frustrating. Life gain stays. Drop a beer gi. Drop a voice. Alright, let's try to collect ourselves. It's a good match. We got boxed out there. Like first. Mulligan. Really? Could be better. Could be worse. Nice to have that veteran in hand. It's gonna give us a turn three. Yeah. 
Chest is good. Epicure is good. This gets played basically for free. I'm gonna smash. Oh, the gas minus is on us, that's fine. I'm surprised they don't kill the veteran. Again, quite alright by me. I mean, the 3-2 is pretty annoying as well. Up next, so this sucks. Alright, that's something we don't really want to see. Keep that land in hand to discard with Obnixilis. Make that uh, treasure. Big money, big money, big money. They've got removal though, right? Well, there's not much of a choice there, is there? Love the life gain. the captain. They lose 2 life to 18. That's okay. Captain's not something they should ever remove. Right? They need to move Birgi. They need to remove Ingus uh, as their creature priority. Maybe even Voice of the Blessed as it grows. Uh, the Moon Dancer also as it grows. The Soul Steeper as it does damage. Right? That's kind of the removal priority if you're against this deck. There is Dixilis. Should have made the devil first. Take down the locals. Let's swing in for the kill. Alright, let kill well, Angus. You've gone and ruined all my fun. It is what it is. Ooh, this is bad. The dog's great, so... It's just attacking. Um, <laughs> really don't care much about the land. My entertainment. You take the draw, which is brutal. <clears throat> well, that's not that bad. Dang you. Defend, I guess. That gives us a guaranteed drop to at least pull uh, another Lunark out. On to 16. We need a miracle. <laughs> Doing need a captain off the top. Not a veteran. Or doesn't pull anything. Alright, let's gain life. Attack off next list. Most likely just interrupt it. Sacrifice, I wonder? Or they just take it. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, they, why, why not chump block? Why not put the, the Twitch in front of the Lunark and then deadly dispute it? Oh, give it up already. Interesting. lose our rebels, which is brutal, but we gain a captain. 16, we really need a rebels. Mine lose life. <laughs> Your punishment is my entertainment. Might be a little antsy on the removal here. 
We're going to exile the veteran. Hit for three. Well, it would actually be hit for four, right? That's the plus one counter. Body dropper down to ten. Hot dogs. Keep her out. We love the life gain. It was a long ways in this matchup. Auto pay. Just two life, and then we'll gain an additional two here. Beautiful. This is our best bet. Alright, get this voice up, get it flying, smash all the nicks, let's smash them. One of our only options here. Hopefully there's not a lot of removal in their hand. Uh, they do draw again. Oh, you dog. You're an absolute dog. I've seen, them. I've seen you target that. A life. And then they have their on it, I assume. My Devil, will make quick work. Mustang, get your cursor off my creatures. <laughs> so I would pop Nixilis. Okay. So another minus four. to get the draw. <laughs> I'm not afraid of any of you. Interesting. We just need to top deck a creature. Right? You defy me, and this you is our goal. Lose everything by coin. Oh, God. Body dropper can't attack. Wow. Rebels out. Me and oh, we really would love a creature off the top. They're gonna sacrifice it. Does it give it menace? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> ah, yes, it does. Okay, that's not great. I mean, we could still double block the uh, Lunark Captain. Taking four down to seven. Looking for it eaten alive. I, they don't find it. Just tossing lands. <laughs> Pleasure doing seven. Go ahead. Devil Please takes us to six. Mercy. These two creatures, which is absolutely brutal. This is gonna tutor a uh, copy of itself in. No? I thought it would count as a two drop. It's dead. I mean, we could pick up a one drop organically. Kill up, Nixilis. This isn't over. It's the, the den of the bugbear that it kills us, I think. With a land, I believe they have both that and the underdog. Which is a good game, bro. Like, Again, further backing up my argument that games of Magic are the same no matter where you play them. Whether they're in ranked, whether they're in the play queue, whether they're in an event. Magic is magic. We lose the Phantom. Guaranteed we lose the Phantom. Oh, just straight to our body. Now this is interesting. Bob takes us to 
Seven, because we just guard the lab. Nice. Carnage. Tribute is owed. Should have done this last turn. Turn. Land off the top is brutal. I'm certain we don't survive. I didn't think we'd survive last turn either. <laughs> hmm. Defy me, and you lose. Open Exilus is a very good card. Box. On five, a draw, body dropper goes up. Oh, that's good. So is this. Money, big money, big money, big money, big money. Medium money, we're still in such trouble though. To seven. Ah, we just need like, a green ingus off the top. Is that too much to ask for? Down to five here. Have to double block. Well, we don't actually have to. Oh, wow. I think we lose. Yeah. Shake down the locals. Being conservative with the attack, though. No, they're gonna go all in. They have only one mana up, and this costs two, so we should be fine for any instant speed jazz. It's a two. Body dropper goes up. Top deck dot exe. <laughs> wow. Woo. Goodness gracious. Push it to the limit. Oh my lord. Have mercy. <laughs> I can't get over how close to dead we were. Turn after turn after turn, I'm like, I don't think we can survive this. I think we're dead. Just try to survive as long as you can to pull off the combo. Oh my gosh. Thank the lord. Now we'll push, we'll push up the voice uh, to 19. Take lethal. Holy Toledo's. Good game. Woof. Oh my gosh. From 12 to number 3 with one win. Easy peasy, love and squeezy. That's a 27 minute match, even at that. Playing first, and. Well, it's actually another gold player. It's kind of weird. Um. I might mulligan this. I don't know how much I like this. This is a little bit better for sure. Let's toss a uh, branch loft. Show down your good. Be a green 
main source. I believe this will be our second white source. Racketeer's boss is a go out of the gate. Using one life. Nice. Forced in play. Racketeer's boss on Ingus and the other boss. Beautiful. So now we've got uh, infinite life at least, which is a good help. Swamps, but they're not snow swamps. So this is decent. Um, no blood on the snow at least, right? We discard. Have to choose one. Have the land. Because I have infinite treasures, which can help us through that. Wow. Another boss. We named Ingus again. And the innkeeper we hit for three. So now innkeeper makes two treasures, so we can uh, innkeeper revels. Wouldn't mind one more land. Ender's Wake is fine. Hey, player this. Hit first for six. Let's see what we get with that. Feels like a block. We'd have next turn one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep. And that way we can keep all this information. Oh, what if they make us discard? What if they make me discard? Well, how about this? How about this? Auto pay. We can do this all right now. We should have done it before our attack phase. Such a dingus. Because we net net one treasure every time we do this, right? Definitely should have done this before our attack phase, but it's okay. I'd rather do it now than just gain a bunch of life. You know, gain a bunch of treasures, gain a bunch of field status. So you, and uh, if you're ever confused with this, grinning ingus, you can't manually pay your treasures. You have to do it auto, or else it'll get in some weird loop that you'll have to Z out of or backspace out of. So just click on it and then click auto pay. That's the easiest way to get through it because uh, it's going to eat up your timer. <laughs> so you want to be pretty quick at it, right? Beautiful. Now you can just go and go and go and go and go and go until they give up. Good game. Just go and go and go and go until they're done. And then you know, always view battlefield. What are you playing? Black, Xander's Wake. On a black sacrifice, maybe. Like... Thalia is probably pretty good in this scenario, I'm thinking, just because I hate mono black. <laughs> and I'm going to drop uh, Captain, my Captain. Uh, I, and I, I, lots of times I'll just, I, I trim, right? So I lose a Captain, uh, I'll lose a Dancer here, and we're down to 60, right? So we're not really adjusting too much of what we have going on. The Moon Dancer is a legendary, so, you know, we're only ever playing one of those at a time, and... Uh, the captain's pretty late game, and because, unless we're ramping into it, its value is slightly diminished. Um, more thoughts on this as we wrap up in today's video. Um, this is one of the times where it would be good, right? Dropping it on four. We're going to keep this. Uh, the land is fine. Yergi there's nice. All right, that's one of our combo pieces. To be a red source. Keeper is a go. This uh, Jetmere's Gardens are only white source right now. Uh, we're gonna save 
that treasure and I guess maybe even just captain out right away. Sanders wake immediately. Oh yes. And that is what we're looking for. Well, uh, Ingus will work. And for one, if we play Birgi and get a land, we are infinite life. Rush stroke is so good. Oh god. We need a Thalia right now. Okay, we're hitting for six, down to thirteen. There's no blocks. Yar. They have a good field state. An easy choice. Definitely just lose the life though, right? And then they pull their fourth land, hook for two. They gain one, two, three, four life. Both our creatures. Oh, interesting. Why not block the two damage? Because the thing was going to die anyways, right? I'm just here to coach, ladies and gentlemen. For anybody unfamiliar, you should have always blocked the... Uh, Absolute most amount of damage that you have. Here you go. I mean, hopefully there's no field wipe. If there isn't, we're pretty good. Uh, second white source off the top, or even better. Which we could get. Yeah, we could innkeeper, voice, ingus our face off. So they need to remove Birgi. They need to remove ingus. Those are their priorities here. Target opponent discards two cards, mills two cards, and loses two life. Okay, Captain and Veteran can go. That's fine. That's nice, but let's go infinite. Well, not infinite, but definitely pushing out of the way of the meat hook. I've been... <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm. Loving that life game. There's a voice. We now have two red mana. We need the one. They could instant speed Bear Geek still. Because it's only at sorcery speed. But it, I don't I'm not sure what they have for one to do that. Good game, my friend. Woo hoof! Rank number two. Holy, where was this luck when I was actually pushing to Mythic the first time? I shouldn't talk trash. I should not talk trash. I mean, gold players are a threat as well. They truly are. I've lost to gold players. Don't do anything but take them seriously. I need a third land. Need a third land desperately. It's an innkeeper.
This is hard. Going against my gut feeling. Gut says red, go green. Because green, at least we have Prosperous Innkeeper. Green, at least we also have uh, the Moon Dancer. Fine. Oof. This is not great. We really, 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 really need that third land. And we really, really, really need it to be a red source. They could hook for one. Oof. Ay caramba. Oh. Lord have mercy. Taking all my lands. This is a conjure though, isn't it? It's not a red source, but it is still a land. Builds us to four. It was also not a green source, so it's not like we played this as the wrong side, as that chance, but. We are in trouble. Oh, wow. Trouble's not the half of it. Right off the top. Ouch. Hit for two. It's the best of three game at least, right? Keep your cool, bro. Red land off the top. Right? We've observed so many times that you just need to ask for it. So we're looking we're looking for a red mana source off the top. And uh, that's going to be fantastic for us. Yeah, see? Four cards left in our opponent's hand. We're a little worried. They pulled a garden from us, which is actually incredibly upsetting. Hey, this is good. It's a massive draw for them. All right, very, very bad news for us. Good news for them. Yikes. Too much of a good thing. We're gonna grind it out. Right, there are six, potentially seven lands in. Yep, he can't get to four. Oh, we'll drop in uh, Captain, it's not up to us. That actually blows. We pull a green source or a white source, I might scoop. So sad. I mean, we go infinite with a red source and a couple turns. So just give it to daddy. Kind of. Better than not. <laughs> Better than another grinning ingus. Oof. You know what I mean? Just oof skis. We keep the phantom alive because it's infinite life with the ingus. Every time it leaves the battlefield, we'll gain one, right? So. How do we do this? How are we going to do this? Stroke is good. For five. Ooh. See, that screening is good for something.
And yikes. The next turn. For six, seven, eight. They have removal, we die. A hard choice. I think we just need to stabilize because there's no way that we're going to get away with that, right? Like hit for 8 twice is 16 plus there's fucking 8 damage and treasures there. We just die. Yeah, we're just dead. For five, six, seven. Do we not kill that and just let it all through? Then that's less damage. That's two less damage. So we're getting hit for eight, which leaves us five. We're dead. We have to lose this. They just, they're just going to beat us here. Right, because they have 8 damage through the bloods. And then they just need 5 to make up the difference on the field. Which is if we let a single one of these connoisseurs through. And, you know, just try to survive as long as we can. Some take a bunch, right? Because our creatures die. It's not lethal, though, is it? We do gain uh, some of that life back. Yeah, it is lethal. Alright. Hell yeah. Take Landro. Well, let's get a good hand here. I like it. Quite a bit. Could be worse, but I think this is fairly on point. Oh? Okay, and we're back. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Would you mind doing that again, sir? Not bad. Land is good, Rebels is here, let's freaking go! I always like to decline this, especially if they're on a full hand already. One Moon Dancer, please. That's pretty good. Rebels out early, hit for two. Worst case, we have the boss. Oh no, they could make us discard two again, right? 
I would hate that. Okay, they take the captain. We get the land. Dog. Alright, so we're gonna grab a phantom here. They blood hook me, I'll cry. Just want a bigger creature than that. I like the scry, no attack. Scry's pretty good right now. Oh, please don't meat hook me. Lose our enchantment, but we go to four. Despair is really good against us, huh? I guess just looking for another rebels. This is a really bad start for us. Mono Black's a hard deck to beat. Okay. Well, we lose our Moon Dancer. And then the meat hook for two. Oh wow, this game's over. Nice. Brutal, 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 brutal. Yeah. We don't keep anything in hand because they have forced discard, so whatever. Another invoke despair, of course. Multiple invokes, you know what I mean? Just wins any game. Quite literally. There's no way we're getting out of this. I'll try, of course, but this is a very good win for our opponent. And again, you know, oh, they're in gold rank. That's just it's such an excuse. You know, I mean, matches of magic are matches of magic, and anyone who's played magic for an extended period of time knows this. Like, it doesn't matter how much experience you have flipping coins. You can flip a coins against someone who's never flipped a coin in their life. Well, maybe not to that extent, but, you know, they're aware enough of... They're playing Magic. They're, you know, they've played hundreds of games, so it's like... They know what they're doing, for the most part. We had that, uh, you know, as a predominant comment last season as I was doing my decks in the play queue, people were like, oh, no, these decks aren't being filmed in Mythic, so they're no good. It's like, well, this is filming in Mythic. You know, it's still the same exact people. At least they're out of cards, but we're, we're dead. All right, we need a big captain off the top. We need this just to block the connoisseur so we stop dying. I've got menace creatures coming into play too, which is brutal. On to six. I mean, we need to top deck life gain, uh, and we need to top deck a birgi, I guess, at this point. Let's still focus on our outs. Looks pretty grim, but try our best. That's that is not good. So we're down to three here. I just don't see a captain for multiple blockers. A little too late. A little too late. Oh, 
Alrighty then. Uh, so let's talk about the deck, where we could go with it from here. Well, you don't really need to go anywhere with it because it's fantastic. We need to go to the nerf zone is where we need to go. Um, there's other options here. Goro Goro is an option to give your creatures haste. However, personally, if I was to adjust the list, I think I would be running uh, second Dina, the soul stepper uh, or steeper. Just for consistency sake, sometimes it gets removed and it's nice to just have the ability to go infinite uh, with damage on your opponent, right? Uh, we do not mind this, but again, uh, I don't want to take away from the Goro Goro builds out there either. Many people have been mentioning uh, the Scalds, Showdown of the Scalds as an option. Potentially, uh, there is a world in which I like Showdown over Inquisitor Captain. Uh, late game, fields full, Inquisitor Captain doesn't trigger anything but the Revels. You already have Birgi out, you already have Ingus out. What's the point? But at that point, you're already infinite anyways, so it doesn't matter. Um, showdown of the Skulls to find combo pieces. It's, it's a toss-up in the air. I'm interested in the Showdowns. I might try that as a variant. Um, with that out of the way, though, I hope you guys enjoyed the deck. I've done my best to break it down as in-depth as possible so you two can achieve a high Mythic rank. And it's time. Let's get into the pack. Holy Toledo. So shout-outs to people on the live event. We had pack giveaways. We had deck giveaways, which is super exciting. Um, so if you're interested in our next live event, we have the pre-release for Bowler Gates Alchemy on the 5th, live on Twitch. We're going to do a big old thing again. Uh, lots of giveaways and uh, make some new decks, which is super exciting. And uh, yeah, so tune into that to win yourself some prizes. And let's take a look at this Bowler Gate pack. Hopefully we can get the camera to cooperate. There we go. Ew. Satchel of... That is actually scary. That is nightmare fuel if I've ever seen it. Just get that out of here. But a pretty nice island here. The Butcher. Ayo River. 3-4 with Trample. Double the power of each dragon you control until the end of turn. That seems fair. Good thing it costs so much for 5, right? Invoker. The Harper. Love the draw card there. The Bard. The Balladeer. Interesting. Patreon of the Arts. Love all the dragon cards. Dragon Brawl decks are going to be gasoline. Giant. Speaking of, well, this is, that's not even a dragon. It's big enough to be a dragon. One Warlock. That Seer in you. Two Handed Axe. I love the uh, Resurgence of Adventure. I mean, I'm sure this is no Embercleave, but... Ooh, okay. This is a box topper. The Blacketh Champion, a 3-3. Legendary creature. Gith Warrior. If you would put one or more counters on a creature or planeswalker you control, or on yourself. Put that many plus one of each of those kinds of counters on that permanent or player instead. Choose as a background, secondary commander. Very cool. We like that. Master Chef. Alt. Art, holog, maybe this is an old art. Come on, camera. We love you. Love us back. We love you. Love us back. There we go. The candle keep sage. I like it. Intellect devourer, or 2 4. Devour intellect. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent exiles a card from their hand until it leaves the battlefield. And then, body thief. You may play lands and cast spells from among cards exiled. Uh, with Intellect Devourer. And if you cast a spell this way, this mana can be any color. Interesting. And Cone of Cold Holographic here as well. With our beloved token. So that's not too bad. Couple rares, we don't mind. Uh, the background commanders are our favorite. Yeah, beautiful. And again, you know, if you want to win a pack, you want to win yourself an entire deck, come hang out with us on July 5th on Twitch. We will be live for the whole day playing Bowler Gates, um, getting down, getting dirty, making some new decks, and having just a ton of fun. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you have an absolute magical day. Make sure to show some love. We'll see you soon in the next.